Hey, what's up guys? It's your mind for you. I'm again back with some more War Tales. And in today's guide, we're going rogue on expert difficulty. We're gonna deal with rich mercenaries, reap some rewards, also deal with the guard in different ways. See how you can launder items, get rid of your wanted level as quick as possible. Today's video is gonna be filled with tips and tricks once again, so you can become the ultimate bad guy. Let's get right to it. All right, so here we are in Marheim, the Vertruz province. It's a pretty rainy day on month nine, day nine of this specific save already. But um, the first thing I definitely recommend you to do is to basically prepare yourselves for the adventures ahead, as we're not going to be very welcome anymore near or around villages once we start plundering the entire world. So um, the first thing I recommend you to do is pick up all the raw materials which you can find in the blacksmith. I already have 49, which is going to be plenty to repair all the damages done to our armor, while I also suggest you to stock up on um, as much of the medicine right here as possible. I mean, you can also take some flawed remedies, which I'm going to do right now, as he didn't sell medicine to me, but I still have 12 right here. And there are other ways of curing your companions, for example, with the gurney. But um, if we quickly have a look at my characters in the camp, six companions, but also four horses to carry all the stolen goods, all the treasure and loot we're going to plunder right now. So, um, my carrying capacity is 542, while you can see that we have a pretty heavy camp weight. And this can be pretty annoying if you don't have a lot of horses or constantly have to deal with selling your items or throwing away goods. So what I like to do is just pack up everything we're not going to use when we go rogue. So after a little bit of reorganizing the camp, placing a lot of stuff in the travel post, we currently have a camp weight or total weight of 120. So plenty of room for spoils of war. The next thing you want to check out if you will have a little bit of spare influence is your camp banner as this one comes with some pretty interesting bonuses which you can activate to resolve combat, get your hands on some extra bonuses as Swift Progress right here gives you 30% bonus experience. And since we're going to do a lot of fighting right now this one is going to be pretty nice while well, respect for the enemy will give you even more loot when of course resolving combat so if you're really stacked up on influence i recommend you to activate both of these but of course, you first want to find some mercenaries which are worth attacking. And it seems like we're pretty lucky as these fellas just arrived at town. And this is where the precious comes in. I mean, these types of um, mercenary groups have a cart with um, this shiny loot in the back. In comparison with other mercenaries, they're also pretty rude. If we talk with these... Might I interest you in my humble wares, my good sirs? Well, if we talk with these lads, they're not very nice to you. Stand back, peasants. These valuable commodities, blah, blah, blah. So you can tell that um, they have two pretty interesting um, items right here, but a lot more stuff. And... If you steal all this, of course, you will raise your wanted level. But after you've defeated the mercenaries, you will get a lot more rewards. So um, what I'm going to do is just take my rogue, Vanessa, and just steal all the goods from these. Well, I don't think we're going to take everything. We're just going to stick to the valuables, let's say. The gray clusters, the alizarium powder, which is awesome for alchemy. And, of course, this weapon and a piece of armor. Well, right now, we are on wanted level 2. At the bottom of this list, it also says you are wanted for the following reasons. Theft in rich merchant caravan. That's my only crime right now. Awesome. No, but um, I committed many more crimes. But after a time, when your suspicion meter drops, Drops, the guard will no longer search you for certain crimes. Or, of course, if they manage to catch you before that happens, you're going to have to pay a fine equal to the value, let's say, of the stolen goods. Or you can just surrender or turn in all the stolen goods and then you're going to have to assign one of your companions to go to jail, for example. Which is what we're going to prevent today. But um, now that we've found our targets, I'm going to quickly press escape. And we're going to activate this banner. So I'm going to assign my um, lieutenant to it. We're going to do respect for the enemy. And also um, experience gained in combat increased. So uh, now we're going to get more rewards after resolving combat with the mercenaries. And of course, since we're going to kill a couple of these, we're also going to get more experience. Rich Merchant Caravan, level 10. So they have two Ravagers, two Merchants, two Hired Killers, one Peace Bearer, Crewmate Arrow and a Pony. 
The most important things you want to focus on when dealing with an enemy mercenary caravan are the merchants, as these have this Dutch ability, also the fugitive, which basically means they will try to run away from the combat. We've got another one right here, and also a horse. And the more you take out during combat, you can even steal the horse, by the way, if you want to have an extra pony. Uh, but the more you take care of, the more reward you will get at the end of combat. Or Well, that is what I experienced so far. It also literally says this unit is carrying items and tries to flee the battle. So they're going to try to run inside this red zone, which you can find in a square around the map but um, before you focus on the merchants you want to make sure that uh, your crew doesn't get swarmed too much so uh, right here we've got a peace bearer with pretty weak movement same counts for the hired killer so since we're stacked up right here we don't have to worry about their first round we can just stand at this center the ravager gets to play next then the hired killer and crewmate so no merchants in the picture just yet we're first gonna take our archers and knock back all the dudes which we don't want to have close to us. It's also nice to have a couple of Valor points before you engage combat, but um, a good solution to that is just to take out your captain, make him stand right in the middle of your uh, crew, and then use the galvanized troops. The amount of Valor points can even be doubled if you first use the tactical order of the character which you want to galvanize with, but um, what we're going to do right now is just engage on one of our enemies. So I'm just going to run towards this dude. Kick him in the nuts. So this character won't get to see play anytime soon. While right now I also want to take care of this merchant, but uh, it's pretty important to know that they also have this dodge ability, which gets applied to them after the end of every turn. This fully dodges the next attack. So what I think is pretty nice to do is take these spears, which you can find around the battlefield and throw it onto them. And this will basically remove that effect. You can also just shoot a certain type of arrow first with your rangers, then shoot a second one to basically get rid of the effect. Now I'm just gonna use my taunt on him, then engage, disengage, and look at that. We easily deal a lot of damage. And I'm also gonna take him out with my wrath ability. So uh, that's already some of the loot secured. The next one who gets to play is the pony, so we want to make sure he doesn't run off. And he's probably going to do so towards this direction, as I don't have any units in this area. But um, we can prevent that by just blocking him with one of our rogues. While I also want to deal with Ignes right here. So first step, this dude. There we go. And what's really nice about horses is that once you've locked them in, they cannot escape from combat. Merchants can use a distraction to disengage while horses they are forced to attack you in their next round right now we can just disengage with van cleave to finish it off with um, a attack of opportunity so we just dealt with the mercenaries and we can steal whatever we were able to steal before we engaged combat right here um, we can take some remains with us which i always recommend to do if you are already a cannibal let's say but um, now we get to loot even more items the brotherhood two-handed axe a brotherhood knight's great sword a blinding powder and all this is pretty valuable i mean all together it's literally hundreds of crowns and if you have a pretty small crew can resolve combat pretty quickly then i think this is an awesome way of getting your hands on a lot of money so we just raided some merchants we also have to accept the fact that for that we're gonna be even more wanted so there we go suspicion level increasing even more so i think becoming a rogue has a lot of bonuses i mean now we do want to stick a little bit more to staying in the forest as on the roads you will find many more guard patrols which are going to be pretty aggressive as well but as long as you stay inside the forest you will have this blue outline around you it's going to be easier to travel unnoticed and also rest with without having to fear getting caught. Right now I'm just gonna throw some eel soup on the fire so we have some extra decks for the next rest as we're gonna resolve even more combat. Of course, if you decide to go rogue, a couple pots can be extremely helpful right here. So um, with innocence, your suspicion meter will deplete 10% faster. While this knowledge, ruffians, if the troop is wanted, movement speed if force is increased by 20% can also help out big time as 
If you have your wanted level all the time, this will increase your movement speed inside force all the time. So traveling also becomes a little bit easier. So you kind of want to have a wanted level to make exploration easier in general. And you can do this with wanted level one, for example, to just have so much more maneuverability. With nimble fingers, you will also reduce your suspicion by 20% during a theft, which can be further increased depending on the level of your thief. Um, backstabbing will increase critical strike chance. So if you attack enemies from behind, this will make resolving combat a little bit easier. But yeah, there are just so many different ways you can go with assassins in the making to give you access to assassination contracts in taverns is also pretty nice. But yeah, to unlock all these, of course, you first have to complete a couple of those challenges. Steal a thousand crowns worth of items or um, pick locks, for example. Send people to jail, which can be pretty useful to get rid of your wanted level. I'm also going to quickly visit the Brotherhood training ground, as this is a place, in my opinion, you should visit at all times if you have a very low suspicion meter or if you are not really wanted yet. As right here, you can interact with a character to get your hands on a couple of different books for your crew. And the awesome thing is they cost a lot of money. I mean, that's not the awesome part, but you can also steal these. So we're just going to select our thief. I think the run and first eight are the most important ones, which you can literally use with any type of character for any build, basically. So I'm going to just steal two of these books. And you can tell that I cannot steal a second book right now as we've already generated too much wanted. So the guards will be very alert. We're going to have to be careful for those dudes. But let's launder some items. So um, if we interact with guards, they will say that we have a lot of goods with us right now. We're going to have to pay hundreds and hundreds of crowns in value to basically get rid of our wanted level. But if you have access to bandit layers on the map, let's just quickly check it out. These are basically the icons, what they look like. Bandit layers will basically pop up after you've taken out one of those towers where you have these skills indicating how powerful or how much this stronghold is defended. But um, right now... We can visit this place. What I think is pretty confusing about the bandit lairs or black market in general is that if you click on the NPC right here, you can interact with the black market, but they will sometimes indicate or give you an idea that you can find a actual black market in the game somewhere. But according to many sources, it's not present in the game. I think they have to be a little bit more clear with this, but uh, this is where you can launder your items. So right now, if we sell the Brotherhood's nice sword, we get 30 coins, which is pretty nice as we won't get any more suspicion out of it. While if you launder the stolen goods in the camp chest, you can place these items and after a couple days resting, of course, they become white and then you can sell them to any merchant. And the original value is 60. While for the sword, we can also get 60. But if you just want to make a quick buck, you just visit the bandit lair. Don't have to worry about any of the suspicion level uh, going up. You just sell everything right here. While you can also sell normal items for the normal values. While this one also also sells you stolen manuals for half of the price of the Brotherhood's training grounds. So if you don't really care about having a stolen book because you're instantly going to train it anyways, I think this is a pretty nice way to get your hands on all the different uh, abilities for your crew. I'm just going to get rid of all these items as well. I mean, we don't need all this. So we just sold the majority of all the stolen goods. If we get caught by the guard right now, it will not be a huge fine which we have to pay to get rid of our wanted level. So um, let me quickly show you, though, how fast the guard is right now on the maximum level. You can tell that they almost outrun me right now. So it's pretty important to manage your energy. Let's uh, do that again. So um, I'm just going to wait for it to recharge. See, they will start running towards me. It's going to become faster and faster. Then we're going to start running. And if we run in the woods, of course, this is going to be even quicker. On the maximum suspicion level, their cone of awareness is also pretty big. So um, you definitely want to be careful with these guys. But um, we just laundered hundreds and hundreds of crowns worth of items. So um, if we interact with these dudes right now, you can tell that... Um, the fine we have to pay is only 480. I say it's not that bad to just pay the fee. I mean, now we lose like 500 crowns. 
but um, we also lose our wanted level entirely. Let's just quickly revisit the Brotherhood's training grounds and get our hands on a couple more books. You're not bothering me. <laughs> Here we go. So uh, we're going to take aim. We're going to take the run manual. We're going to take the first aid skill. I mean, we're just going to steal all the books right here. And yeah, right now we also became a master thief. Has a chance for theft to not increase the suspicion. Well played. That's a sell value of 150 per book if you lotter it at your base. Let me also very quickly save right here to show you what the fine is. We have to pay stolen items possessed, 1,300. And also theft for the Brotherhood's trading ground, 100. But uh, I just quickly reloaded where we saved the game. And instead of visiting the guard, we're first going to visit the bandit's lair. So now we're just going to sell all the books to this guy. We have maximum suspicion level once again. So now if we pay the fee to get rid of our wanted level, this is only 200. And this even half because of the mercenary crew attack, which we did earlier. If we don't have those goods with us, the stolen goods, we only have to pay 100 for the theft in the Brotherhood's training ground, which is pretty interesting if you want to get a lot of money in this game without too much hustle. I mean, it's still hustling, but a nice way to get away with it. Thank you for your contribution. What I think is really nice about paying the fine as well is that you also get to keep the stolen items. So if you have a couple of valuable items with you, then you don't have to worry about losing them. While if you surrender the stolen goods, you will have to assign a thief in your crew. You can do this to a prisoner, by the way, but he or she will go to jail. And trust me, that's not very nice. Anyways, here we are near Strumcap. Tiltrand County. We have different icons on the map right now, M different merchants or NPCs you can interact with. Um, this one, of course, is the guard. You want to be careful for those at all times if you are wanted. But um, if you want to make quick buck, you don't really want to focus on uh, the knapsacks of refugees or um, the icons with a uh, money purse, let's say, as these guys usually don't have very valuable goods. While uh, if you want to make quick buck, I think the armor icon can be pretty interesting. So uh, let's quickly check this one out. As you can see, these dudes sell a bill hook of 150 armor of 150 this is actually a good one light armor with movement speed armor and even plus four critical hit. we can basically steal this and sell it for half of the price or of course first put it on our chest launder it so um what i'm gonna do is just take vanessa steal my items and um the crazy thing is sometimes the items which i steal don't pop up as stolen as she basically has an item with her this one has a chance that the stolen item may not be considered as stolen i think i got this one from uh, the tower in the southwest of the arthes region uh let's see the old customs post location which i liberated can be found a little bit northwest of korcha we've got a lot more loot right here but um now i think i've shown you enough ways on how you can quickly raise that suspicion meter get your hands on a lot of money by laundering stolen items and then afterwards only paying a little bit of fines to get rid of that suspicion level entirely but um i think some people are not really interested in paying the fines. They just want to see how long they can survive this wanted level five without having to spend a single dime themselves. So one of my favorite ways of dealing with the guards is by placing pitons or pythons all over the world. So um, right now I'm getting charged by a pack and these are always super fast, especially on the highest wanted level. But um, if you just have a piton very close to you and just quickly click on that to travel from A to B, you can instantly outmaneuver, let's say, the enemy. I can just place another one right here. And now if we trigger the guard, let's say, we can just use a little bit of energy to sprint towards it. And look at that. We will outplay them once again. And this is especially useful if you are in a pretty tight spot or dealing with border crossings or places where you don't have a lot of space to walk around, let's say. For example, right here, if I get attacked by the guard, I can just click on this piton right here and easily teleport to the top of this mountain. So I 
instantly outplay these dudes, they're gonna start running around the hill and I can just click the piton once again and get back to where I was standing originally. I um, place these pitons all over the place. So I can even prevent having to pay for borders. So I can just quickly hop on one to the next and bypass all the different borders, basically. I have a guide for it at the top right of the screen. But um, I think Piton placement is extremely valuable in War Tales. Probably the best way to deal with the guard. As it really doesn't matter how I've got my camera turned and I get ambushed in any way. I just click on the Piton and take care of it. If we quickly open up the map, you can see that I've placed them everywhere. Not only to escape from the guard, but also to make roaming around to farm resources a lot easier. So this entire mountain pass has pitons all over it. There near the Tiltran tomb, you can also find a couple secrets right here. There are pitons all over it, while very close to the Tiltran Jill, I've got a couple of these placed pretty tactically. These three pitons allow me to bypass the bandit border crossing, while a little bit to the north, I've got two pitons to prevent having to pay passage for the Herak border crossing. But this can be done almost everywhere. It's gonna take you a lot of time to get rid of your wanted level if you don't pay fines for it. I mean, we are currently on 421. If I'm sprinting, walking, sprinting, really doesn't matter. You can see that it depletes super slow. And now if we open up the camp, do a little bit of resting, let's say, throw some snacks on the fire, we're gonna rest. And you can see that this also depletes it super slow. So to speed up this process, you basically want to Turn prisoners in. If you do that, for every prisoner you bring to prison, you will reduce your wanted or suspicion level by a value of 20. You can imagine that this is going to take a lot of captures before you get this bar to zero if you are on the highest wanted level, but still you will make a lot of money while you're at it. So I think it's a pretty good way of getting rich in War Tales. While the easiest way to get rid of your wanted level quickly is to just pay the fines. Of course, you first want to do a lot of stealing, especially those valuable books, then sell them to the black market, reduce the fines you have to pay because the stolen goods crime is the most expensive one but um that is basically it harold is literally pissing his pants so he can calm down with a little bit of valor or even surrender himself definitely don't recommend you to do this we can just soak it up we'll gain a tough status to increase the movement speed in the world but this is how you become a smooth criminal in war tales crime should be a little bit more punished in my opinion as you can just go and steal everything once you've unlocked the bandit layers I can assure you, crime does pay off in War Tales. You should be doing it 24-7. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. A big thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful. Of course, if you want to see more War Tales, I've got plenty more videos in the description and on the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.